Oh, hello, my friends, and welcome to Open Studio. The I'm Vlad Duchev, and today we're going to talk about four major steps in paintings, right? Or in painting. Uh, what those four steps, uh, the reason for those four steps, and why you would need to follow those four steps uh, to be successful. Or maybe not. I'm not sure. So I'm going to present those four steps and you will decide if you like it or if you don't like it. Maybe you have your steps. Maybe you have 10 steps. Maybe you have 200 steps. Or maybe you have one step. I have four steps. So I'm going to present you four steps in oil paintings. All right. So let's get started. So we're going to talk about four major steps in oil painting. This is my steps. This is by any way, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, to tell you that this is the only four steps you have to follow. And that's it. That's, that's the only way. No, this is my four steps that I developed lately. And I would like to share with you those four steps. All right. So I already did the paintings. It's actually behind me, but I forgot to do the introduction. So I'm kind of rolling behind the uh, actual paintings and trying to explain what I did. Yeah, maybe it's a smart idea. Maybe it's not. You judge it. Let me know. All right. I like to do everything on the fly as like, you know, as an impressionistic painter. Uh, this is, you know, this is how I paint just on the fly. Uh, just, you know, just explore, explore, you know, myself and see what will happen. Sometimes I throw it away, sometimes I keep it. So uh, I hope this video is not going to go in, in a garbage can, but you know, may help someone of you to uh, develop you as a painter. All right, so let's jump on the subject actually. So those four major steps. So step number one will be scouting. Yes, you mean like scouting, but scouting? Yes, scouting. So instead of driving you know with your easel as usually you go in the plein air and it's like you know you're driving and you see something and like hey, you know what uh, i just want to save time let me stop and i see wow this is looking good let me paint i'm not <laughs> i'm no one to say this is wrong but this is not my way all right so my way lately that i developed is spending a little bit more time on scouting so, meaning, um, you want to find ideal place to, or ideal subject, or ideal scenery, motive that speaks to you, that you can look at the scenery and say, wow, I know how to paint it. I, you know, I feel that something good can come from this scenery. I, there's a lot of I feel I, you know, whatever, whatever you, what has motivated you to paint. All right. So the main goal is to spend a little bit more time and I will explain you why, because you spending more time to spend more time on the painting. All right. So I'm just take camera and um, I feel something. I feel like a, you know, device, like art, artistic device. I don't feel this as an artistic device yet. I know they're coming and they're going to get close. But I feel the camera in my hands and I just start driving, stopping at location, taking photos and just observing, observing, observing and see, uh, feeling for the, you know, I'm waiting for the feeling, that feeling like, wow, you know, I really like this. I'm pushing on the side a lot of things that maybe five years ago I would stop and, you know, wow, put my easel, put my, you know, my tripod and start painting. Those sceneries like, whew, whew, no, no, no. I'm not sure based on what, based on this study of how to, you know, come to find something to paint or maybe it's just experience. I don't know, but I would just recommend tr at least trying this. So I'm taking photos as a reference and uh, I, I may spend a week just driving and looking for good place to paint, good scenery to play. Let's say I found something, right? So that will be step number one, just scouting, finding something good. You're spending time on scouting to spend time on painting, actually working on. 
you don't want to create, I can show the pile of studies and paintings they have like this, that I have to put the ground or throw it away. It's just useless. I got some experience from painting, but it's just use, useless pieces of cardboard or whatever, piece, uh, canvases. Um, so you, you're spending more time, so you can spend more time on something that will be, you, you can put on your body of work. And we'll talk about this later. Spend a little bit more time on scouting and finding what to paint. So step number two is sketching, all right? Do several sketches. If you find a place and you feel like this is a good candidate, do sketches. One, two, three. You decide how many sketches do you need to do. So on today's painting, this painting, I did several sketches and I come with one, this one right here in my hand, or this one right here. And um, the reason of sketching is to get the feeling of uh, monochrome um, composition. That's it. You can do value studies uh, in monochrome. You can do, um, you know, maybe color pencils, whatever. My sketch is actually feeling uh, something like this, uh, like this, is feeling of uh, composition in monochrome with some, maybe three values, no more than three values. Uh, that's the main reason of sketching. And I can do from one direction, I can do from another direction, I can do from the you know, third directions. I'm trying to find the best, I found the scenery, scouting. Now I'm spending time on sketching, see what is the best angle, right? To paint, maybe move some stuff around. I'm working on composition, I'm working on feeling it's basically transferring into future painting, all right? So step number two is sketching. Uh, step number three is study work. So if sketching was a monochrome or monochrome, uh, just to see the uh, composition, your study work is the same thing, but in colors, in hues, right? In, you know, presenting the colors. So in our case, uh, this is a study I have in my hand. This is a, done in gouache. You can do it in oil, you can do it in acrylic, you can do it in whole gouache. You can even do it in uh, watercolor. It really doesn't matter. You work on your sketch, on your composition. Now we're transferring this composition into colors and see the, how the hues and what the palette, basically, what kind of palette you're gonna use and see how this composition transform from monochrome to hues, to colors, right? That is your kind of study. You're studying how to work in the final paintings. So that's step number three. And step number four, I divide it into two sub-steps. So step number four, dash one will be underpainting. So pay a little bit more attention to underpainting, what colors you're putting, you know, to put your final coats on top. So your underpainting is shining through and working with your final painting. So underpainting is a four dash one, very, very important. I would pay more attention to my underpainting that final. If my underpainting is done well, my final layers will go like, whoo, easy, right? And of course, step number four, four dash two is final layers of your paintings. Again, you can do it in underpainting in acrylic, you can do it in uh, oil on top or acrylic on top. Uh, you can do underpainting in oil and then oil on top, uh, what a mixable, whatever medium you use. The main reason is start from scouting, searching, to sketching, to study work, and to final painting through well-organized underpainting. Now I'm gonna show you the actual process of painting. I'm not gonna show you the sketching because I did several and I did record it, but it's just the sketching. I was moving stuff around, you know, moving the trees, moving, I just want to see, or, you know, how to organize this painting. Actually, here's the actual, you know, photo of that scenery. I stopped um, months ago, about months ago, I stopped at Zufar's 
house on my way to Adirondacks and we were walking on the board around the uh, some lake a beautiful lake and I took a photograph and I just like the atmosphere and I, I remember the you know the sunset and the you know the contrast of getting cold and warm sunset it's just was beautiful so uh, I'm using the photograph as, only as a reference only 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 in the warmer time only reference nothing else right and then uh, finally I'll show you the uh, final paintings I was gonna do a speed up if you want to watch it uh, on slow motion let me know it will be on the coffee side so you can log into my coffee side and see the full lengths all right so let's start it all right and as I mentioned we're going to skip the step number one the sketching because to be honest I just forgot to record it and also I because I forgot to record it I actually put on my schedule right in front of me here uh, to do actually a video or episode on sketching what is the you know approach to sketch sketch the scenery right so I'm gonna do it separately so we go to um, step number two which is uh, study work which I probably gonna do you know, separately as well but all right step number two sketching all right I just transferred the uh, sketch on uh, paper uh, I know it's working on my sketch right here and I can actually tape it right here I'm gonna look at the composition and values I have a drawing right here so let's um, let's you know do a gouache study and I highly recommend these two things for gouache water base and this is collapsible collapsible uh, cup for like when you travel love it for watercolor and for gouache and just it just must have okay and if you uh, if you want to learn how to paint gouache let me know I have a video and if you guys want to have additional uh, additional video for it or like a course on how to paint in, in gouache let me know I can definitely work on this all right so this is my palette um, watercolor palette I don't even know where I got it I think it's like Amazon uh, my colors are gray deep green light green uh, ultra ultramarine cobalt uh, I think it's cerulean alizarin red orange uh, yellow ochre yellow uh, this is lemon and uh, white white is right here I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more white because I would need more white now I'm not gonna I'm I'm gonna look at the colors but not really look at the colors because I have a really good memory and <laughs> I have a really good memory it sounds not good uh, I have a memory <laughs> I have a memory it doesn't sound good either uh, I just <laughs> just memorize the colors and I remember the atmosphere so uh, I'm gonna look at this but not really because I'm gonna paint what I remember all right
All right, so this is the study. It needs to dry right here. So this is the um, our study. Can we pull something from from this? Absolutely. So let's move to uh, step number four. All right, so this is the um, palette that I'm going to use. Ultramarine, cobalt, manganese blue. Um, this is teal blue, golden green, rosy yellow, titanium white, Hansa yellow, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, orange, oxide brown, transparent uh, 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 red, and Elizabeth and Crimson. All right, so this is my palette. And I'm going to use two brushes. One brush that I really love at, for underpainting. It's a big brush by Rosemary uh, Ivory Angler. Um, I just love this brush. It's just doing, job, I mean, making its job as easy <laughs> as it could be. And then another one is a Rosemary. You know, I love Rosemary brushes. Uh, this is Eclipse Filbert number 12. I you know, I love this hair. All right. So welcome back. Um, uh, we're back on this painting, uh, which we have to develop right now. It's a acrylic underpainting, which is completely dry. It's another day. I actually gave a couple days. I have two references, actually three references. I have my sketch, which I really like. I have my um, gouache study uh, on six by eight, which I like. And I have the photo right here in front of me. Uh, and I have inspiration, number four, most important. You have to have inspiration to paint, all right? So if I'm looking at this painting right now, I really don't like. Do I like this scenery? Not really, but here's a challenge. 
to make something uh, ordinary make it extraordinary all right and uh, the style that I'm painting right now which is open impressionism which is you know there's another subject to talk about what is open impressionism and make ordinary scenery extraordinary so this is this is cool I, I love it I love just you know see what we can do with just like something like this you know what this is just uh, 101 right uh, painting 101 on a, a, any art school uh, or even like art for beginners you know one third one third pass s s shape uh, composition <laughs> so 101 all right so how we can make this 101 scenery looks like wow all right i'm not sure i'm gonna do wow but at least i can do it for myself i can do this wow for myself right so i can say wow i can do that all right so let's jump on this here's my palette i have actually introduced some uh, other colors on my palette and i'm um, if you're interested i can shoot actually a different uh, episode on colors so about colors i have different colors on my palette and i can explain it just let me know if you want to hear why i choose those colors and what i'm doing with those colors for example i have one two three four five i have six blues right now on my palette six yeah not three not one or three or even four i have six six and then i have you know i have three reds and i have a lot of, uh, a lot of um, browns uh yellows browns and this is my guest uh colors on on this side uh, so why choose those color choose those colors i will show you another video anyway so this is my palette since i'm using acrylic underpainting i'm going to use galkit straightforward galkit um, and I actually already poured some uh, puddle on one pile on my glass palette. So I'm gonna instead of pouring it into cup, uh, which I have right here, I just pour it on my palette and just dip in, in on my palette. It's just much easier for me. All right. So this is done. This is done. Let's jump. Uh, another thing that I'm using. I'm gonna show you the brushes that I'm using. So, uh, you know, I'm freak on rosemary brushes that, and this is evergreen, so very soft um, brush, evergreen, flat. And then I have these brushes. Oh, yummy, 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 yummy. Uh, I found these brushes on, actually, uh, when I was visiting Zufar Big Buff and we went to the store, I think it was Jerry's Artorama. And I was walking and like, oh, you know, everything is the same. I can order it from home, you know, online and get to my home. And then I, I, I just found this on the, one of the aisles. It was not in the brush, uh, brush aisle or section. It was completely separated. And what struck me, uh, for example, this number 12 brush, which is a really fat, really fat round brush. And keep in mind, this is a watercolor brush. Yes. This is watercolor, very soft watercolor brush. It was like two dollars. The small brushes was like dollar twenty. Can't walk by, all right? Can't, I cannot just ignore it, all right? And this is watercolor. And I look at myself like, like really, you're going so cheap from rosemary <laughs> brushes to this is this is by Creative Mark, Germany, you know, German company. Of course, this brush is probably made in China. Yes is you know, many brushes um but i just love this brushes short handle which is like lately i just love it and this is soft so when you're dipping into oil it's not really picking up a lot but if you mix it to with a medium like gal kit and start you know trying to get the colors what this brush does on the canvas is just amazing all right and for my style or open impressionistic impressionistic style this is just, you know, must have. I'm gonna cut the video or shoot the video about these brushes and show how they work. I'm gonna show it today. 
All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. Let's switch the camera. I'm talking too much instead of painting. Maybe I should just talk in, in, instead of paint. What do you think? Uh, no, I think I look better just painting than talk. Because probably you don't understand what I'm saying. You know, maybe like 60%, so just better paint. All right, let's jump on the canvas.
uh, this will conclude this painting. So we started from um, sketch as uh, part number or step number two. The first step was the uh, scouting, find, finding something to paint. Uh, the second step is actual sketching. Then we went through uh, study work, which is step number three. And then the final step is number four, which is divided into two, you know, underpainting and final layers of painting, which can be done in acrylic or oil. Um, that's it. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you would like to see, see it uh, in the full length, it will be on, on coffee or here on coffee, looking in the coffee, full length. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, all right? And let me know if you like this process. I would love to sh start doing this more and more, the process of working on the painting, working on the, not just paint and see what, you know, maybe, you know, what, what would happen, but actually selecting, uh, working on your selection and then uh, finalizing the, the selection and working on final painting. All right, so if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit the like, hit the bell, it helps us to grow as the community and as a channel. And if you already subscribed uh, to my channel, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Stay tuned and uh, look for new episodes. Actually, I'm working on several episodes right now. I'm probably gonna release them very soon. So stay tuned, I'll see you next time. <laughs>